Hello, and welcome to Stress Less with me, Jess. Today, my special guest is Jeff Harris. Hello, Jeff. Hi, Jess. How are you? I'm so great. Thank you so much for connecting with me today and about to enlighten everybody on everything that you do. Thanks for having me. And I got to tell you, I love your energy. And I think I've shared that with you before, like off the podcast, but it's so wonderful to be around. So I'm excited to be here. Thank you again for having me. Now you just made me blush. No. <laughs> All right, Jeff. So you are the co-founder of Gazelle Partner Solutions, a boutique firm that helps businesses in the namely two areas, credit card processing and recruiting. So this is really cool. And I think this is important because I don't think people realize the stress and everything that goes behind credit card processing. So can you tell us a little bit more about what you do in the sense of the credit card processing? Yeah, absolutely. So in short, businesses need to get paid by their customers for whatever they're doing. And in 2023, the concept of cash is oftentimes just unfortunately not there. Um, especially if you don't have a place where people are actually going to buy your product or service, if they're buying it online or it's over the, uh, like remotely. So, um, I have a brokerage that helps businesses accept credit card payments from their customers. And my clients can be anyone from like a pizza shop or a restaurant where you're actually going and buying something to a retail store where you're going to buy some clothing. It could be a residential contractor who needs to take a payment um, from you to like start a project and then invoice you for a balance when it's all done. It could be a website or a doctor's office. Anyone who needs to collect credit card from their customers, those are the folks that, that, that we help and that we, um, that we support. Um, and we broker. So we work with a bunch of different options to make that as simple and stress-free for our clients. Um, and we'll handle the stressful things that come along with, with that because everything has a little bit of stress with it, right? For sure. For sure. And so when I first started my business, I didn't even know this was even a thing. Right. And I think, like you said, you work with so many different industries, right? You said from the restaurant to doctor's offices, but you also, do you work with people such as me who I use square up for like coaching sessions and more of that arena? Do you work with people like that as well? Yeah, so we have solopreneurs who uh, just need to get paid for for whatever they're doing. It could be coaching, um, it could be consulting, it could be uh, a variety of things. Uh, and we do have platforms that are competitive to a Square and to other solutions out there like Stripe um, that we work with. What's most important is to be able to have that conversation and dialogue and understand like what is the flow. So, for example, for you, Jess. You might have someone that's like booking an appointment through a website, and then when they book the appointment, they make a payment, um, and that money needs to be paid prior to the appointment. There are solutions out there, like a Square, for example, where that's all encompassing, and that might be the best fit for you and for your business. And there might be someone else that offers um, consulting in a different capacity, and they want to just bill afterwards or do it in a different capacity. It's having a conversation and understanding what they need. And then if there's something in my repertoire and in my portfolio that will support them, I'll present it. If not, I just want to make sure they have something that they can use, even if it's not something that I offer. I love that. Like, yeah. Cause like I said, I, I didn't know this was such a thing and cause there's so much that really goes into it. And I think a lot of, for me was understanding, I think this is where a lot of our stress comes from that processing fee. You're really like, you know, and I think that is, to me, what I've looked at different things from PayPal, Stripe, Square Up to people like you, right? It was that processing fee. Can you break down the stress of the processing fee for us? There is no way to break down the stress of the processing fee. I am so sorry. Um, so it, it it's funny because we think about having to like pay someone to allow someone else to pay us. And that's essentially yes. what it is. And it's wild. <laughs> But if you think about it, when you go shopping or when I go shopping, we put something on a credit card, we're given rewards points, like incentivizing us to use our credit cards. Right. You as the business owner are paying for those points flat out, right? So that's 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 essentially one of the things behind it that allows it to work. You also pay for the convenience of getting that money before the customer really has paid the money, right? It's a short-term loan. They haven't paid their credit card yet. So the credit card's giving you business the money without their, them receiving it back. So that's kind of what, or that's the, the reason, if you will, behind why fees exist. And it's businesses want to make money, right? That's why the fees exist. Um, fees really vary 
across the board and there's like a variety of ways to, to, to go through it. So I will do my best to keep it simple and let you know of like two different ways that I, I see fees and how I approach them. The first one is there's like a wholesale set of costs that the credit card companies charge everyone, right? And what you're being charged is dependent on a bunch of different factors, like the type of business, if your customers are paying you in person or not in person, like a bunch of different things. But that wholesale cost is called interchange. And that is the same for my company and anyone else that distributes credit card processing. We all pay the same interchange. What's different is how much we put on top of it for our profit, which is the markup, right? It's interchange plus. The plus is what you can manage. So that's how I like to do it because it's very transparent. My customers can see every month what's being charged to them and they understand that it's not going to change because that's how we operate and how we do business. And they can also see on their existing statements where it might change. So that's the first piece, right? And that number is going to vary. It should really never rise above 3%. And that 3% is like, if you are taking payments where the card is not there and it's like a high-end rewards card, it should really fall underneath that. And how far underneath that is not something to discuss on the podcast. It should be discussed on a one-off scenario, right? Um, the second way is what you're starting to see a lot of, and that's having like a cash price and a credit price where the customer is essentially paying for the credit card fees. And you'll see that at gas stations where they have one price for a credit card and one price for um, uh, paying cash. You'll see that in restaurants where you'll start seeing signage that said, we have a surcharge if you pay by credit card. And you'll see other scenarios where they have two different menu prices or two different items on. And when I say menu, I mean like not a restaurant necessarily, but whatever their the business is selling. And those are all different ways um, to have the, the, um, the customer, if they choose to pay by credit card, cover the fee for the business. So those are the two ways that I see credit card fees being um, detailed and described and how I see them kind of out in the marketplace. I'm going to stop because I feel like I got into the weeds. Does that make sense? Um, no, it, it really does. Are you more stressed out now than before we have done this call? I'm definitely practicing some breathing techniques as you speak. No, um, <laughs> no, but I think it really makes a lot of sense. And I, I'm glad we're having this conversation because like you said, this isn't just for the business owner that's having the processing fee, right? Because as a business owner, that processing fee is being taken out of that fee. So when I charge you, we'll make it very simple. When I charge you a hundred dollars and I have a 3.2%, you know, service fee that's being taken out of the fee. So I'm getting less money that I'm asking you for. And I think a lot of times as a client, you're going, I just gave you a hundred dollars. It's like, yes, but that goes to so many places. It's not just straight into your pocket. So there's that outlook, but I think also it's also the, when I'm out at stores and I'm seeing the service chart, I mean, it's everywhere now. You know, like you said, the cash is not a thing anymore. You go to a sport game or something. You can't even pay for parking and with cash anymore. You know, I'm so used to that, just <laughs> that blew me away. A cut last year. I took money out to go to see like the Phillies and I got there and I couldn't spend it anywhere. And the only place I could spend it was like the guy selling soft pretzels and t-shirts outside the stadium. No one else would accept it. It was like nobody else legal. wanted it. It's, it's, it's just, it's, yeah, it's just it's a whole different world. And so that's why I wanted you to break that down because it, it's, it's affecting everybody. It's not, there's no ones that's like, maybe there is, but in a lot of ways, there's not someone that's winning more. Right. So, and it really understanding, like you said, and then even the sense of when I swipe my credit card and I get those rewards, it's coming from this processing fee as well. Cause it has to come from somewhere. The person yeah. that I'm calling to say, Hey, you overcharged me or I have a fraud or whoever that money has to come from somewhere. Right. Yeah. So, and, it so I, yeah. and it, it comes from us, you know, that's swiping that. <laughs> no, so it's so true. So I'm so glad that you broke that down because it, yes, it wasn't a lot, but it was an understanding of like what's going on. And I think that really releases some of our stress. So, I mean, we're making jokes about that. This is stressful and things like that. But my question for you is what is one way your job brings you stress? Whew. I think that there are things that are out of my control and those things are the ones that bring me the most stress. And here's an example. One of the big credit card companies that I do a lot of business with runs on technology. And just like everything else in the world, sometimes things don't happen as you expect them to happen. And sometimes things break. That's kind of how it works. Well, uh, this is about two or three years ago. I'm on vacation. Uh, going down the shore and 
get checked in with uh, the family and we're inside of the, uh, the condo that we rented. And all of a sudden my phone starts blowing up. It's Friday night or Saturday, it's a Saturday night. My phone starts blowing up. And I can see from the number, the people that are calling me that there is an issue with one of my credit card processors. And it turns out that that Saturday night there was an outage and it affected all of that, not just my customers, all, I mean, millions of customers across the States. And that's completely out of my control. There is nothing that I can do, whether I am on vacation or I am here, there is nothing that I can do aside from answer the phone and say, yes, there is an outage. No, there's no more information. You will get a text from me because I can get it to you quickly as soon as I find out whatever is happening and get details. But that level of people panicking is just incredibly, it's stressful and it's out of my control. It's out of all of our control. Um, but those things and those calls and those moments of panic where you have to keep calm to help provide some calm for someone else, those are the ones that I find to be incredibly stressful. Oh, I love this example for so many reasons. Everybody can relate to this in some way or form, right? Like you said, a lot of things are actually out of our control. There's a lot of things that we do have control of, but there's a lot of things that are not in our control. Like you said, it's a Saturday night, you clocked out you're with your family, the phone is blowing up and yeah. Okay. So you're not a heart surgeon. I know it's one of the examples I use a lot, but there's a certain amount of time where you have to respond. It's your job, things like that. And it's also to calm your client down because they're nervous. They're scared. You're dealing with their business, their money. Like there's so many things attached to this. It's not just, okay, well, just, I'll call you on Monday. It's yeah. There's a lot going on. There's so many emotions attached to it as well. So for you, like you said, to have that calm level head, maybe when you get off the phone, you might have to do some breathing, but in that moment, just to kind of go, okay, what does my client need? What do they, what are, what, how do I have to listen to them? Everything in between in that way, and then go react in a different way. So having two different reactions in the moment, and then a different way when you're kind of coming back down. A hundred percent. And you know, the thing that you always can, or at least that I always think about is like, this is my business, right? So I can choose to not respond and I can choose to not answer, right? I am on vacation. My clients didn't know I was on vacation. I can make those choices, but then I'm also choosing what the potential outcome is. I am in a commoditized industry, right? Where you can get credit card processing from a lot of different places. And one of the reasons why people will, will work with me and will stay with me is because of the service and the communication. And that's a really important thing that they that, that I value. So, you know, as a business owner, we don't run away from stress. Oftentimes we run towards it and we kind of just learn it, right? Um, but that's the way that, that, that I look at it. And, um, you know, it's, it's one of the fun things that you get to do with, with and you know this from running your business, you know? You, yeah. you, have, you, have, to, you have to deal with all the things because the buck stops with you. Even if it doesn't actually stop with you, from your client's perspective, the buck stops with you. And I think one of the things that you're saying too is it's not that you're not setting boundaries because you are. But at the same time, it's just that communication piece. You jump on the phone. Hey, Bob. Yes, there is an hour. Uh, it's, it's out of service, whatever the case may be. We're going to figure it out. I'll keep you up to date as I become up to date. But you also told your family, hey, this obviously seems really important. I have to go take this phone call. So I think with also with being clear on when you're having your business is that there are going to be times like that. But it's also learning when there is that boundary and when there isn't. So I think that's also what I'm hearing, too. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of it is about preparation. So for example, this happened to happen on, on, um, you know, uh, on vacation, right. But before I went away for vacation, I reached out to my clients and said, Hey, by the way, I'm going to be out of town. Here is the number that you can call for like the processor while I'm gone. If you need something and then you can't get a hold of me for whatever reason, I don't know how services, whatever it might be. Um, so you set that expectation, but with something like this, when you do start getting phone calls, you know that there is something that requires your attention. And that's, that's while you are setting boundaries as part of running a business. And I could choose, and to, to what we had said earlier, you can choose to not respond and that's fine, but you also have to deal with the consequences of not responding um, if it is something that is truly urgent and impacting their business like this was. Yeah, wow. so good. Before we get into the lightning round, what is the one thing you want our listeners to hear from you today? Oh man, a lightning round. Well, not there yet. Don't worry. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get, we'll get there. Um, I think what is most important um, is something that you had mentioned earlier. Um, and it's about the breathing, right? And it's 
trying to find ways or to work with someone like you, but to, to find ways and to work with someone like you who can help you kind of regroup and move through these things. Because life is full of challenges. Life is full of things that are going to throw you off and are going to stress you out. And it's not that you ignore them, like you kind of got to sit in them, right, and appreciate them and take them and then move on. But to have ways to handle those things and to be able to effectively come out of them is incredibly important and a really, really important, it's incredibly important and great way to, 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 to have a healthy relationship with the, the shit that happens, right, for lack of a better term. So I would encourage people, if you haven't connected with Jess, that would be what I would say is to connect because it's a really it's a really important skill set and a really important thing that, that most people don't have a handle on. They really think they should. I did not pay him to say that everybody. No, um, no, but it, it, you know, obviously I agree with this, but it is really true, you know, and I think what your point is of something I really focus on too, is that stress is going to be every single day. There's life is going to happen no matter what we do, but it's that reaction that we have and how we, the support that we're giving ourselves, the tools that we give ourselves, I think are really important and that a lot of us can lack on. Right. So I appreciate, I really appreciate you, you know, bringing that up because it is very important. All right, Jeff, let's get into the lightning round. Are you ready? Okay. Yes. Now I'm good. <laughs> what is your most used emoji? My most used emoji, um, the heart. The heart. Oh, what color? Uh, red usually because it's oh, the right. quickest one. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is your favorite thing to do in the summer? Anything outside. Oh. Favorite day of the week. Oof, this is a lightning round. Um, <laughs> I would say Sunday. Sunday. Um, what is your favorite breakfast? Mm. The healthy Jeff is going to say oatmeal. The non-healthy Jeff is going to say crepes. Oh, crepes are so good. I, just, I had one a couple weeks ago and there, I wouldn't have said it if I didn't have one a couple weeks ago. Super underrated. They, they really, really are. Oh, all right. Now I know what I'm making this weekend. Okay. Last question. What is your favorite store? My favorite store? Target. Target? Yeah. Yes. You can buy all your things there. It's, yeah. Food, uh -huh. clothes, goggles. Literally everything's there. <laughs> Literally everything is there. Jeff, before I let you go, I just want to, um, what is the best way for someone to contact you? Yeah, so um, the best way to get a hold of me is on my cell phone. It's 215-837-3436. Um, we talked a lot about credit card processing. We also do recruiting, which I want to make sure we make a mention on. You can check that all out um, on the website, um, gazellepartnersolutions.com. Um, and feel free to connect on any social. I'm not going to put all my handles on here, but um, you can feel free to connect with me on social. It's a great way to stay in touch and to get to know one another. Jeff, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Jess. Thanks for having me.